Adhikarana 2. Identity of the Self with Brahman. Sutra 3. Atmeti tupagachanti grahyanti cha. 2. But the Upanishads. Upagachanti. Acknowledge Brahman. Iti as Atma the Self. Cha and grihyanti, make others understand it as such. Translation But the Upanishads acknowledge Brahman as the Self and cause it to be so understood. The aphorist discusses whether the Supreme Self, which is possessed of the characteristics as presented in the scriptures, is to be realized as identical with oneself, or different from oneself. Opponent. When the word self is heard of in the Upanishads as referring to the innermost self, why should any such doubt arise? Doubt. The answer is this. The word self can be taken in its primary sense only if the self and God be non-different. Otherwise, it has to be understood in a secondary sense. That is how the aphorist thinks. What should be the conclusion then? Opponent. It is to be understood as different from I, oneself. For the entity, possessed of such qualities as not being blemished by sin and so on, cannot be understood to be possessed of the opposite qualities. And the entity, possessed of the opposite qualities, cannot be understood to be possessed of the qualities of not being blemished by sin and so on. The entity, possessed of the attributes of being free from sin and so on, is the Supreme Lord, while the entity, possessed of the opposite attributes, is the embodied soul. Now, if God becomes identical with the transmigrating soul, God will cease to exist, and as a result, the scriptures will become useless. Similarly, if the transmigrating soul becomes God, there will be none to follow the scriptures, which will certainly become useless. This will also contradict such means of proof as common experience. Objection. Even though there be difference, one has to resort to the idea of identity on the authority of the scriptures, just as one has to think of Vishnu in images, etc. Opponent. This may well be so if it pleases you. But then you must not lead us to admit that God is the self of the transmigrating being in the primary sense. To this we Vedantins say that the Supreme Lord is of course to be realized as one's self. Thus it is that the Jabalas, while speaking of the Supreme Lord, present him as identical with the self in, O blessed deity, I indeed am thee and thou indeed art me, O deity. Similarly also the other texts like I am Brahman, Brihadaranyaka 1.4.10, are to be understood as postulating the identity of the self with Brahman. As a matter of fact, the Vedic texts make us understand God as our very self, as for instance, this is your self that is within all. Brihadaranyaka 3.4.1. This is the eternal ruler, your own immortal self. Brihadaranyaka 3.7.3. That is truth, that is the self, and that thou art. Chandogya Upanishad 6.8.7. Namaste. So this is a very interesting commentary because Shankaracharya puts into the mouth of the opponent the chief misunderstanding of materialism in general and Neo-Advaita in particular. And what is that? 
the idea that God and the empirical self are identical. That God is free from sin and so on. That means all the divine qualities of infallibility, complete knowledge, uh, omnipresence, omnipotence, and so on, are actually in this sinful, fallen, uh, unintelligent, uh, prone to mistakes and misunderstandings, you know, and so on. Huh? So he says the consequences of this, very interesting, that if God becomes identical with the transmigrating soul, God ceases to exist, and thus the scriptures become useless. And this is exactly what happens with the neo edwaitans as well as the other materialists. The neo edwaitans misinterpret the scripture, and they say that ahang brahmasmi means that I, the transmigrating soul, uh, the individual, the conditioned being, is identical with Brahman. I mean, this is really dumb, but it's understandable because it's motivated. What is the motivation? Oh, now I don't have to listen to the scriptures. I don't have to follow any sadhana or observe any rules or regulations. I don't have to perform austerity. I don't have to worship uh, because I'm God and I can do anything I want. Uh, nobody can tell me anything. So, of course, as soon as you stop learning, as soon as you stop growing or performing meritorious acts, your downfall begins. It may not happen right away. It may take months or years, but it's going to happen, especially at the time of death, if you cling to these beliefs, because you're going to find out in very, very stark and uh, unavoidable way that you ain't God. You, the individual, you, the personality, you, the conditioned living entity, are not God. So what is then? Well, Brahman is God. Brahman has all these qualities, being free from sin and so on. Perfection, in a word. But Brahman is not the transmigrating soul. Brahman is the consciousness within it. And Brahman is simply the witness. Brahman does not do anything, is not attached to anything, cannot be changed by anything, performs no actions, creates no universe. Huh? We're talking about Nirguna Brahman. Now, Saguna Brahman is another whole story because Saguna Brahman creates these bodies, this world, all kinds of activities, merit and demerit, karma, cause and effect, and so on. So what's happening is that these Neo-Edwaitans and also the materialistic scientists and others like that, they simply assume, based on one sentence that they like, huh? Aham Brahmasmi, oh great. <laughs> And then they throw out the very scripture that taught them that. I mean, how dumb do you have to be, right? So what is called for here is a reassessment of our attitudes. That, well, wait a minute. I make mistakes all the time. My knowledge is not complete. Uh, I am lacking in compassion and good behavior and so on and so forth. In other words, I'm a human being. 
a regular old human being. But within me, there is a spark of Brahman. Now, that spark has to be cultivated. That spark has to be separated from the other stuff around it, hmm? which is not desirable. Huh? We don't want birth and death. We don't want suffering. We don't want ignorance. So we don't want to make mistakes. We want to have complete knowledge. Complete knowledge means a complete rejection of conditioned existence. Neti neti. Get rid of it. Throw it away. At least during your meditation, at least during your sadhana, huh? try to mock up what it would be to live as Brahman alone, without all the coverings, without all the conditionings, without all the imperfections. Now, this is real sadhana and is firmly based on the scriptures. And it includes the scriptures as a basic support. That the sadhanas, the rules, the austerities, all that given in the scriptures is there to help us get rid of all of this nonsense that we don't need, that we really are not. How do we do that? We simply stop identifying with it. Not that the world is going to go away, not that we're not that the body is going to die, you know, <laughs> not that we're going to go crazy if we reject the mind or the body or its activities, its conditionings and its imperfections. Huh? They're going to continue because the Saguna Brahman is creating them. So they're going to go on just fine. Don't worry about that. But you try to separate out your consciousness and examine your consciousness. That's what Ramana Maharshi means when he says, who am I? It's not only who am I, what am I? What am I? What is this world? Why am I born? Why do I have to die? What are all these activities? Where do they come from? What is real knowledge? And so on and so on and so on. You know, it, it, in Tiruvannamalai, I met some people who were actually using this as a mantra. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And they understood nothing from it. So, the real purpose of who am I is vichara. Vichara means investigation. Now, if you're a detective on a case and you're investigating this crime, huh, you're very active. You're gathering evidence from different sources and analyzing it and comparing it and try to come up with a story of what happened. Well, the same should be true of Atma Vichara, this inquiry into who am I? What am I? How did I come to be? How did this situation I find myself in come to exist? What are the causes? What are the effects? And this leads step by step to transcending conditioning, and cause and effect altogether. When that happens, you know yourself as Brahman. And all this other stuff is going on, you know? It's like sitting in a room with a TV that somebody has turned on and just left going, you know? And it's going blah, 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 and this and that, and stuff is happening. But you're not identified with it. You don't really care about it. Yeah, it's there, you know? But it's not me. And this should be our attitude with regards to material existence. Yeah, it's there. It's going on. But it's not me. 
It's just a show that I'm watching for my entertainment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.